Chang here with Andrew. We haven't reviewed an N robot in quite some time, so I'm excited to see what's in this box. This is pretty much the next generation to the D6 Plus. It's a 52 volt, 26 amp hour scooter, capable speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. So let's open it up and check out this robot. Not one of the better packaging jobs I've, I've seen. You can see here we have some impact points on this box. Another here. And you can see this impact point is actually red. It's coming from NanRobot and you see the paint has rubbed off. But what I'm most worried about is this impact point right here. And that's a locking mechanism. I don't really love locking mechanisms getting knocked around. Ah, it's like birthing a cow. I feel like I'm on the farm again. I think this is bent and that does not instill confidence in me. First, connect the charger to the scooter's charging port. Second, plug the charger into the electrical socket. We've seen posts on NanRobot's Facebook group that their charger has fried and they followed the instructions, plugged it into the scooter first and then into the wall. That is completely incorrect. You need to plug it into the wall first and then into scooters. Every other scooter is like that. So as I'm putting this thing together, I'm starting to notice there's definitely some fit and finish issues with the scooter. It's really disappointing to see this type of fit and finish on a scooter. All right, during the unboxing process, we found that there are a couple areas on the scooter that were knocking up against the edge of the box. And we we're afraid that there may have been some sort of damage. And it looks like it did suffer some damage that we may not be able to repair on our own. Basically, this bolt that runs through the steering pull locking mechanism is bent on the end. so. The first three quarters of it is straight, it'll go in. The last quarter of it is bent and it seems to get stuck and not tightening all the way. This should sit more flush towards the scooter. And then hook looks like it's gonna get in the way of you putting your foot up here. Yeah. And am I not supposed to put my foot on here because it says don't step on the tail light? Yeah, and they're pretty adamant about that. Don't step on the tail lights, exclamation mark times three. You know they're serious when they say that. It reminds me of a transformer. See here, this is like a blend between an Autobot and a Decepticon logo right there. The other thing the scooter came with was this pump. I don't see myself ever using this, uh, but I think it's a good reminder that before you guys ride, make sure to pump up those tires. 58.8 volt charger, two amp output, 26 amp hour scooter, so it should take 13 hours to charge the scooter from empty to full. All right, now that we have the scooter all set up, let's do a walkthrough from top to bottom. It's about 22 inches of usable space, technically 24 inches long, eight and a half inches in the skinniest part, nine inches in the widest part. Let's measure the steering pull height from the deck and we're about 41 inches tall. With these handlebars, 25 inches. But yeah, let's just go right through the walkthrough of the scooter. Starting out with this handlebars, on the right side you have a voltmeter. Let's go ahead and power on the scooter, hitting that mode button. We'll change the speed modes to one, two, or three. It is a good looking light bar though. Oh yeah, great to be seen at nighttime. Yeah. There's two light switches, one for the light bar, one for the front facing light and the side lights that are controllable. These LEDs are controllable. It turns on the lights in the rear. The turn signals are on this light and there's another one over on the corners. You have an electronic horn. On both sides, you have hydraulic brake levers. At the base of the steering pole, we have that faucet style locking mechanism that NanRobot is so famous for. Uh, the problem is we were only able to get the clamp to engage about 50%. It won't go all the way in because that bolt has been bent. So we're gonna have to figure out a fix for that. Uh, the only way to adjust this suspension is by tightening down on this top bar to make it tighter or softer. Plastic fender, pretty rigid, 10 by three inch hybrid off-road tires. Got a rounded profile so you could use it for street riding and it's got knobby off-road tires so you could take it off-roading. 140 millimeter brake disc with hydraulic brakes and dual thousand watt motors, one in the front and one in the rear. We have dual charging abilities. It only comes with one charger though. And then this kickstand is actually pretty nice. I do like this kickstand. All right, normally at this point in the video, 
we uh, put on our safety gear, we go ride, we tell you what we love about it, what we hate about it. This one's gonna be a little different. That mechanism to keep it locked is only halfway engaged. So we are going to make sure that gets fixed before we test ride this scooter. Andrew's gonna take some pictures, send it over to the Nan Robot folks, and we'll see how quickly they respond. Three weeks later. So as you can see here, we have all our gear on. The Nan Robot is ready to go. It took about a month to finally get the parts. The good news is we have it fixed and it's ready to go. We've upgraded the channel. We now have wireless mics. We can only do it because of viewers like you guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for your watches, your likes, your subscription. That helps us improve our equipment so we can ultimately improve the videos. And if you guys like this, give this video a thumbs up. Yeah, see that error one? It's kind of jerky, but then when I go to mash down on the throttle, yep, it's just giving me some error codes. I figured out the issue. If I have the lights off, it throws that code. But now that I have the lights on, no issues. That suspension's good. It has some good things going for it. Plenty of space to shuffle my feet. The color display looks great at nighttime. The lights on this are pretty sweet. This front light bar is so bright. The suspension, it's really nice and stiff. I'm dropping off curbs, I'm going down the stairs. It feels solid where a lot of coil suspension easily bottoms out. There are a lot of plastic parts to the scooter, but they're on there really solidly. The fenders don't rattle. The light in the rear is sweet, it's pretty bright. And the turn signals are really bright. Plus the 10 by three inch pneumatic hybrid off-road tires. Those are really sweet because I went from streets to the off-roading, I was perfectly fine. It feels stable at high speeds and I felt great inside of this loose gravel. The grips, I feel like the grips are on there pretty solid. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the past, they've been a little uh, slippery. Oh, in the past loose. I could just literally basically pull it off and slide right off real quickly. So good looking scooter, pretty solid but there are some flaws. Let's do a speed run, and then after that, let's discuss the things that we don't like about it. Yeah. All right, we've got all the toys today. Not only did we upgrade the mic, but we've got some upgraded camera equipment. This is the Insta360 X3. Thank you guys over at Insta360 for sending us this camera. We're gonna try out this 360 camera with the bullet time feature. While he may be looking pretty silly to you, this is what it looks like on the Insta360. All right, let us know what you guys think of this Insta360 camera and how we we can use this camera in future videos because we're new to this. Okay, the road is clear and uh, we're ready to go. Really stable. Oh, that's a bump. 56 kilometers, 58, 63 kilometers, 65 on the display. Oh, that's a little bumpy. I'm impressed. It's an overachiever. I saw when I was down at the other end, it went 43 miles per hour and the stated top speed is 40 miles per hour. We were able to go zero to 10 miles per hour in 2.97 seconds, zero to 20 in 5.59 seconds, zero to 30 in 10.49 seconds. And then this is where it kind of slows down a little bit. Zero to 40 miles per hour was 22.19 seconds. And then zero to 43 miles per hour, it took me 28.87 seconds to hit it, but it kept gaining speed. It said 66 kilometers on the display. The display is actually understating what the top speed is. So that is impressive. Holy cow. Usually the speedometer on these scooters overstate your speed just to make you feel like you're going fast. And in this case, it's understating our speed. So the scooter has its quirks. It's not perfect. Let's ride over to somewhere a little less windy and let's talk about the things that we don't like about the scooter. Yeah, let's do it. These brakes are decent. You have to press really hard. Is that something that we can adjust though? Let's try adjusting it real quick. Okay, that is better. We'll Let's see if that how this works out. Okay, this is brake test number two. Woo, that worked pretty good. Yeah. I'm impressed now. I do like how easily adjustable these brakes are. You saw that was pretty good stopping power. I almost went over the front of it. Let's talk about the things that we don't like. Biggest thing for me is a lot of things were damaged in shipping. This kick plate right here, it's nice and big. You have this thing that hooks into the steering pool and it gets in the way. I ride on the side of it. I ride like this, so it doesn't get in the way. But if it's like this, you just have something in the middle of your arch, which is just terrible. The other issue is there is no local dealer here. You're gonna have to wait for fixes, only serviced by NanRobot directly. A 60 volt battery would make this scooter awesome. I just don't know why they would 
could make such cool changes to this, upgrade the D6 Plus and leave it as a 52 volt scooter. Nanrobot needs to quit using cheap battery cells. This is not a Samsung or LG battery cell. I'm pretty sure it's like DMEGC battery cells. The error code, we're able to figure out a workaround. The ride quality was pretty darn good and it was an overachiever in terms of speed. This scooter, it started off slow. We were underwhelmed with the issues that we had to deal with at first, but in the end, this scooter has some pretty good things going for it as long as they can figure out the issues coming out of the factory in terms of quality control. We have our full written review at gotscooter.com. Thanks for watching and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.